Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings. I'm going to be doing a podcast on the sciences. This one is called Ancient Roots of Psychotherapy. I found this article enlightening. I was intrigued by its concept and its content is pretty cool and I'll read it. Uh, the article is titled Ancient Roots of Psychotherapy Matter Now. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy has the Stoics to thank for inspiring this field by Derek Barris. This is on, I think this is Big Think site. I'll put the link in the descriptions if people want to go through it. The points are Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, a 20th century invention, points to Greek Stoicism for inspiration. Stoicism and CBT share an emphasis on using logic and reasoning to overcome emotional difficulties. Knowing how to respond to challenges lies at the foundation of modern psychotherapeutic practices. So right away, it's right up my alley. Ever since I was 16, which is 33 years now, I've been fascinated with psychology, neurology, human behavior, the whole the whole gambit. So this was something I caught my eye. I bookmarked it, and I'll begin reading it now. Where do thoughts come from? Though we've advanced our understanding of the psychological actions that lead to thinking where they arise from remains uncertain. Freud believed thoughts operate at the level of unconscious. Modern psychology and neuroscience abandoned that idea decades ago. Experience leaves imprints, memories, that serve as blueprints for thought. The developments of behavioral therapy and cognitive therapy in the first half of the 20th century laid the foundation for cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. A form of mental health training that aims to disrupt cognitive distortions and behaviors and help regulate emotions. Initially applied to depression, this treatment now includes many other problems, including depression, sometimes kin, anxiety. While CBT's roots can be traced to various therapists in the 19th century and 20th century to the 60s, an emergence of third wave CBT kicked off in the 80s. This trend coincided with CBT being used as a catch-all to describe a number of modalities including dialectal behavior therapy, rational emotive therapy, and cognitive processing therapy. Today, CBT generally implies any treatment aimed at improving cognitive and emotional issues. While a 20th century intervention, CBT was presaged in the philosophical school of Stoicism. CBT espouses a rational approach the psychosomatic and emotional malaise, making us recall the words of Socrates and Ep Epicurus, both of whom believe philosophy is therapeutic. In fact, the latter in Fragments writes that the philosopher's school is a doctor's clinic. A side note, this is fascinating to me. This is things that I've been reading about for years. I've gone over and studied CBT very often and have a pretty good understanding of it. So I'm already really invested. I'm going to continue now. Stoicism was founded by Zeno of Citium in the third century BCE. The philosophical foundation sounds Buddhist. Don't allow pleasure or pain to motivate your actions. Accept each moment as it is. Live a virtuous life by treating others fairly. Live in accordance with nature. Also of note, in this media-dominated age, which loud, unapologetic hypocrites hold office, 
Judge a person by their actions, not their speech. Then you will know who they really are. That's interesting. I'm going to continue. Zeno said that in order to flourish, eudaimonia in parentheses, you must exhibit the will for Pharisees to not be seduced by sparkly objects or the fear of death. This accomplished through the acquisition of knowledge combined with an ability to implement the ethical framework that such knowledge demands. Stoicism flourished until Christianity dominated the region in the 4th century CE, though many have argued that CBT represents its modern incarnation. Donald J. Robinson and Trent Cobb recently co-authored a deep dive on the history of the relationship between Stoicism and CBT in the journal, The Behavior Therapist. The best modern example of Stoicism, they write, can be traced back to theologian Reinhold Niebuhr's 1934 prayer. God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So this is great. There's always a little something cool that you can take from religion. You can acknowledge the benefits it had in some circumstances. But this, for me, gives me more evidence that most of the shit is bullshit, but that there is wisdom in certain things, and you could find it. So that's really interesting. I'll continue. The author's credit psychologist Albert Ellis, founder of Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT, for inspiring the modern renaissance in Stoicism, as well as pointing out its applicability in psychotherapy. Ellis believed that emotional problems are not caused by external events, but rather our irrational beliefs about such events. This idea was borrowed straight from the pen of Epictetus, the first century CE Stoic philosopher. Ellis opened the floodgates of Stoicism in his field, though as Codd and Robinson write, psychotherapists tend to read Ellis instead of retrieving the source. Nonetheless, the lineage is clear. Aaron T. Beck, the founder of cognitive therapy and also heavily influenced by Ellis, linked to quote, uh, like to quote Marcus Aurelius, if thou art pained by any external thing, it is not the thing that disturbs thee, but thine own judgment about it, and it is in thy power to wipe out this judgment now. End quote. It's pretty cool. To get a little bit of stuff I like, like philosophy, Stoicism, I would believe the right tool for the right job. It's time to be a skeptic, time to be a pragmatist, a stoic. Anyway, I will continue. Big picture outlook, we are in control of our emotions. Emotions, as psychology professor Lisa Friedman Barrett writes in How Emotions Are Made, are not reactions but creations inspired by past experiences. This falls in line with Aurelius, whose quote above is not about the suppression of automatic response, but rather choosing logic over irrational thinking. Emotions do not arrive from a myth mythical abyss. We have control in how we act and feel. This is where logic is applied to psychotherapy. Don't simply fall back on old patterns of behavior because you're accustomed to them, especially when you cast yourself as a victim or powerless cog in an uncontrollable process. As Niebuhr implies, many things are beyond our control. What is not is how we act in the face of adversity. The Stoics knew that life was not about pleasure. Seeking only good feelings does not lead to freedom from the unpleasant realities of existence. These ancient philosophers preached the development of ariti, excellence of character. They utilized the four foundations of platonic virtue, wisdom, justice, temperance, and fortitude, as a philosophical bedrock in which to build that character. Such development requires self-control. Our brains seek to our brains seek quick dopamine hits that come with instant gratification. The tempered spirit sees the long game and adjusts accordingly. This is so interesting on many levels because of today's Facebook uh, bullshit, the nonsense in social media. 
So I think that last part right there really hits home. I'm going to continue. Modern cognitive therapy techniques align with stoicism in the understanding that emotions and beliefs are not derived from separate processes. Neuroscience backs this up. Emotions are feelings, but what we feel must be translated into concepts. An upset stomach could be due to a breakup, yearning, or spoiled food. How we experience that feeling is not separate from the context that causes it. In each case, we have some amount of control over how we treat the symptom. This leads, a, this leads to another ancient practice that has recently experienced a renaissance, mindfulness. Paying continual attention, prosach, as parentheses, to thoughts and feelings is the foundation of stoic therapy. By recognizing destructive patterns of thinking, that patient has an opportunity to reshape their experience of life. This quest for level-headedness persists today and will likely persist as long as we're alive. We should derive some comfort from the fact that humans have been chasing it for millennia. Maintaining poise and control during challenging times has always been difficult. Knowing that how we act during times of challenge begins in our heads is the key to empowerment. So that's so important. Another thing I love, meditation, mindfulness. These are some of the things I pieced together when I made my Foundations for Wellness. You could check out my playlist. It's a simple breathing exercise that goes into a little bit of meditation. It's just the beginnings, but it gives you control and lets you learn how to deal with emotions and feelings. Now this is just an awesome for me. I'm gonna see. Okay, there's there'll be links in here. There's a. Uh, sometimes I want to be careful with certain sites like Big Think, but there seems to be some links in here that um. I like to confirm that they actually lead to something. So if it refers to a study or books. The links to that, but this isn't one of those type of things um, in the sciences that you're worrying about uh, there being fallacies or things like that. So I love this article; thought it was great. It's how I kind of think of things. Where psychology got a bad rap, it got overrun by nonsense bullshitters for a long time. But we have a better understanding. Neuroscience is filling in the blanks. We've got a better system, a method using evolutionary psychology and what we could from things like psychotherapy and all the other fields. We kind of know what works a little better now. It's not just, you know, go back to your childhood and tell me what you think. So there's a big gap between when it was something you could say to somebody that it was respected or a part of the field that you can go, okay, um, a very trusted field of the sciences. I think that's where some of the mental health stigma comes from. Just the uh, quacks and, you know, unscrupulous people just ran with a lot of bullshit nonsense that, I mean, granted, back in the day, sure, it was needed. I believe talking to a friend helps and talking to a friend who knows a little more about these things helps and so on and so forth to a mentor, a counselor, a therapist, a psychologist. I mean, so I get it. You know, you go through these things, you talk about things, but it became like a, almost like a scam the way I think about alternative medicines and stuff. But anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed the article. I sure did. If you need to understand certain things, it could be a, starting point for you to look into things like cognitive behavior therapy philosophy stoicism you can look into things like pragmatism and you can look at the cognitive distortions um you know that we in the biases we have you can link that to cognitive dissonance and so on and so forth this is a real intriguing and i'm always excited to read these articles uh you know what to do 
everybody. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.